What's up, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Ola. It's beers. It's beers with Ola today. I'm actually having white wine, but it's fine. White it's wine with Ola. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm here together with Tosin, and uh, if you do not know who Tosin is, you're in the wrong channel. Mm. You know, it's Tosin of Animals as Leaders. Thank you so much for being Dude, here. Dude, nice to see you, man. How's your NAM going? Woo! It's real sick. Um, we're happy to be back at NAM, and you know we're proud to show what we have. And there's a lot of like a lot of interest. So yes, it's like a you have a really good booth. And like the placement of the booths, like whoa, there it is. Yeah, it's like it's right in your face. It's it was a good placement. It worked out, and there aren't any other like guitar like booths nearby. So no. it's like someone selling like magazines across so <laughs> exactly i think no. they're kind of mad at us though oh really you, cra you cracked the apps or <laughs> it's just a wall of people and then like shred happening and then they're standing at their like magazine booth oh yeah that's where it is sorry okay. magazine company <laughs> that's cool yeah. so you obviously you're here with abasi guitars mm -hmm. and uh tell us a little bit more about what came to your mind like when when did you decide to to do this thing when did you decide to make your own thing yeah, it's a bit of a long story, but I think I can consolidate it. Um, I was an Ibanez guy for a long time, and often with Ibanez, they have existing models, and maybe they let you paint it a certain color yes. you like, or you put some signature pickups in. Right. No one really challenges this model, and that's cool. Um, but uh, as an extended range player, I was like, man, I really want multi-scale. I really mm. want these things. And um, they were open to that, which is really cool. That's why I dug being on Ibanez, because they were always open to pushing the guitar forward. Mm. Um, so they let me begin working on my own shape, a unique shape. And um, they agreed to multi-scale and had these ergonomic ideas. Um, and they were all down for that, but it started, it took like multiple years because uh, an operation of that size, you just, you know. It takes a, time. Yeah, a lot yeah. of moving parts and they yes. do things thoroughly. It just takes time. Um, Long story short, I began to just feel like, man, well, I own this design and there are other people who make guitars. And beyond that, I got really into the design part of it where I was like, I don't want to just put out a black guitar with eight strings mm. because what if someone wants it in six string mm. and they don't want it to be black, they want it to be candy apple red or whatever. Right. So I was like, man, I think I should attempt to just kind of do this on my own. And uh, yeah. Found the luthiers that, that I thought could, could handle the situation, and it was cool. That was That's the kind of the genesis story. Yes. Yeah. It's funny to hear because basically what you're saying, like how you described, there's a bureaucracy, of course, obviously, when there's a, such big brands. I mm. mean, and you being on the forefront of, you know, uh, you're in a modern metal band that's really, you know, you know everything goes quick mm. and the attention span is very short for people and the, like the lead time for you to design a guitar at the big brand can take a lot of a lot of time yeah and you, you, I, I know the same because I was point, the exact yeah. same uh, type I was like I wanted to make so much yeah but there's always this hindrance that you can you know you were just so passionate about it that's why I thought it was fun that you uh, decided to create your own brand because it's basically exactly the same story for me yeah so many parallels yes yeah yeah it, because you know i mean you know your audience mm. and in some way i guess ivan is also knows the audience it's just that they have so much on their plate and i mean they make you, ukuleles exactly that's <laughs> yeah. what i say and, and they, they probably make because. a lot of money out of it as well. i mean dude i think that company is really remarkable yes and but like you said um maybe it's like an internet 2.0 thing but the the rate of relevance and the need to respond to the, like new trends and it's hard to plug that into a multinational sort of atomized that's, corporate situation that's with always like been like and, that for you know they've been around for so many years they mm -hmm. have a way that they're you know creating guitars and doing signatures and all that so mm -hmm. i mean times have shifted for sure yeah yeah, it's like the resources available to people like us with ideas and being able to access like 
the pipelines to make these ideas real. It's, yep. it's, it's a new thing, I think. So it's kind of like you're on the forefront of this, this thing that may become more common. I, I always say this, this will become more yeah. common. You're going to see a lot of, you know, wild audio <laughs> concepts, yeah. old England yeah. guitars and whatever. I, I think this is, this is the future, basically. I think you're going to see a lot more of that. It makes so much sense. I know there's some disdain. Some people are almost like, it's almost like, well, you're a popular, you're a popular YouTuber, and you got a, you tour with a band, and you got a signature pick of like, why do you need to also like, do yeah. <laughs> but um, I think when it's done correctly, which I think you've done, it actually validates the whole thing, you know. Right. So, and I think you're bringing something that isn't arbitrary. You're kind of like answering a necessary everything between price point and spec and quality. You know, this is why we would turn to certain brands. Mm. So. I think if you're able to merge those things, then you're as as attractive to a buyer as any brand is. I mean, yes. if they get a quality instrument spec the way they like at a price point that they can afford, then it's like, well, you're a brand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So tell me about the guitars you have here. You want to hold this one? Oh, shit. Yes. Thank you. How do you feel about that? <sighs> It's pretty light for an 8-string, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This does not feel like an absolute monster. This actually feels like it's... Uh, Me sit. Very cozy, yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> We're getting there to yeah. the Swedish word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> but it feels really good, I must say. Thanks. Well, okay, so we're talking about why. Like, why would you make your own guitar? Why yes. would I make it? And I think the whole thing is that normally a brand would say, well, Ola, what do you want? And we can do it for you. Yes. Yeah, so that still stands with your own brand. Like, yes. what do you want? You'll do it for yourself. Of so course. the eight string is, can be monstrous. Like, mm -hmm. and that's cool sometimes if you're like a six foot Swedish person, exactly. then it, it works. Um, but <laughs> for me, uh, I like to do a lot of lead guitar stuff. Mm -hmm. And I always found that to get the scale length to be tight on the low end, also the treble strings are super yeah. wide. And it sounds killer for rhythm, but then it when does. you go to do like legato, you're just like, bro. So multi-scale kind of fix that. Yep. And then um, we tried to do some things with the body shape to make it more comfortable. Like, uh, you know, the beveling, mm -hmm. it allows for your, your forearm to be a bit more flush with the body. And right. it looks pretty cool. Oh, this opinion. is good, though. Yeah. I feel this. Like, you know, my amazing pecs. Mm. You know, you can put this. Cradles the pec kind Exa of exactly. delicately. Well, like, like, really enhances the boob yeah. factor. Yeah. But it, yeah, it makes sense. When I do like this, it really actually feels really pleasant. Yeah. I was always into like the Ibanez S series and stuff yeah. like that, like thin. Exactly. Yeah. And then um, the body actually just joining, the, the neck is like a large percentage of the neck is yes. in the body of the yeah. guitar. I feel like it reduces the overall like span of the guitar. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing, it feels a bit more like towards your torso. Right. Um, and then um, this cutaway allows for two common playing positions. There's like the classical this. dude, yeah. Or this. And the, yeah. So, you know, I know you don't Sh show, solo too show. often, but I've heard you do it and I think you should solo more. It's happening. But maybe when you're on stage, do you ever go to the monitor and you kind of want to elevate the guitar? No, uh, yeah, it happens. It, yeah. That's just when I, or I, I take a chair and sit. Nice. <laughs> Well, uh, if you wanted to do that, I feel like even when you're standing, you can manipulate this thing right. to kind of get it, the guitar where you want. Yeah. Um, and I like single cuts, and mm. there aren't many single cut eight strings. And I thought as a starting point, it'd be really cool to go the opposite direction. Yeah. Um, so that is like pretty much the design approach with this guitar. Um, and then you know I have these Fluence pickups, which are kind of a new pickup technology. Yeah. They are very versatile, and they they kind of like. There's certain things that a passive pickup has trouble with, like maybe splitting the coils and yeah. having a volume drop out or some noise or right. not quite getting a single coil sound. Yeah. These kind of answer that. And they also have some of the helpful dynamics that you might get from a, like an active pickup. Yes. Without the brick wall. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, th these are signature Fishman yeah, yeah. pickups. I so what's these. what's the difference between these and the Fluence Modern? Yeah, I'm familiar familiar with the Fluence Modern. It's probably one of my favorite active pickups. Cool. Because of exactly what you're saying. Yeah. The Moderns kind of sold me. Yeah. I was like, man, the clarity is crazy. That's that's it. 
Yeah. Like the str string separation and just like overall, mm -hmm. just a really pleasant sound. Yeah, and dude, I'm a passive pickup lover because I feel that they they represent what's happening in a way that isn't, you know, colored. Or, you know, like a passive pickup has yes. dynamics that feel natural, but... Um, so there's a bit of if it ain't broke don't fix it when it comes yeah. to i think the benchmark of most of the guitar tones people love have been on passive p pickups yep so i was kind of skeptical but you know you could play fluence in a blind test and be like okay what's this is sick what's happening yeah. here and for me that's an objective like proof sort of situation yes but anyway uh the moderns were cool but they didn't do like this five-way split coil thing that i need right so i was like let me let me voice a set mm. and uh it's really dope actually yeah so is there any difference like for your i mean for your type of playing which is really percussive mm. is there any change in that regard like that you had to make through pickup or you'd be surprised like if you plug in a strat and you start doing this right something about the the mids kind of scooping out mm -hmm. uh you get this really percussive sound yeah. like inherently so we just wanted to have split coil and single coil sounds that were authentic to a real single coil without noise right yeah and then um fishman's have the ability to be dual voiced so there's technically two pickups right. in each um so that's another thing it's almost like bang for your buck or whatever no. yeah exactly it's it's versatile there's, it is two different sounds it's two different yeah. sounds and you you've played a lot of pickups yep. and there's one thing to have a db boost or something like that mm -hmm. but it's actually like the mid point shifts yeah. and like the cue of the mid shifts yes. and the low end does it's like yeah. and this is new this is like a new thing yeah i know yeah so i'm like concurrent with the futuristic approach to guitar i think these pickups are like the perfect addition because yes. now the sound is also updated too you know exactly yeah so what are you playing like or, or let's just like i just want to see this guitar what 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 color is this? You told me. Chartreuse? <laughs> did, you come, did you come up with that? My girlfriend told me it's chartreuse. <laughs> is it that in the model, uh, like the specs as well? Is that the we color? don't know yet. Oh, okay. Gotcha. We're like, yo, we, it's from the, uh, there's a BMW M3. It's like a, right. the 2012 era yeah, M3. I the one. I yeah, the one. and I would see it around LA and I'd be like, man, I love that color. So when we were specking stuff for Nam, we were like, <laughs> sent to like google images of this m3 you yeah. know? <laughs> like, but it's cool we do um this beveling where the well we do a finish uh, thing okay hopefully your lights catch it but it's like uh polished here and then and um, it's semi here yeah yes yeah. exactly it's maybe more apparent here so yeah. the light reflects differently right yeah that's cool i was inspired by the iphone actually because right. on the back it's like it's like monochromatic but like there's like a black glass thing with also oh, yeah, yeah. like a satin black situation that's right but know. overall this looks looks absolutely amazing thanks so check out the neck carve on this guy actually um so people see the single kind they're like but what if i want to like play the upper register right as if i don't want to play in the upper no. register no you're fine here and so so yeah, yeah exactly anyway. yeah i can but, feel it yeah, and there's, there's thumb over the neck, guys, which I'm totally fine. There's amazing players who do thumb over the, right. over the neck. But when you increase the width of a neck, um, unless you have hands the size of yours, it becomes yep. increasingly more difficult. Right. You're limiting the actual reach of these fingers by doing this in yes. the first place. So exactly. I kind of so you're basically helping people. We're, um, it's like <laughs> training wheels for your thumb on uh, the back of it. Smart, <laughs> smart. Yeah, yeah. but it, it actually, actually feels good feels uh natural in a way yeah i feel like um i mean i i, I don't i don't really do the thumb thing around the neck yeah. so, so for this 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 is seamless yeah and grover jackson's building these and he was able to you know write this into the cnc and so yeah. it's completely consistent we, we can retain the 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 thickness of the neck profile yes it doesn't taper into a thicker profile as you get to the body it exactly. stays and then it dramatically scoops up yeah. so it's pretty pretty cool design feature. That looks great. Thanks, man. And uh, what like when you're playing live? Do, uh, I did a video of uh, the Abasi uh, Patos. Mm. Is it Patos pa pa <laughs> for Paphos or <laughs> what is it? it it's Greek. Greek it's Greek, right? and uh, we're apparently it's Pathos. Pathos, yeah. Like you know when you say pathetic or yeah, empathetic, pa it's yeah. the root root you know 
Latin root of yeah. the, those words. It's like emotionality and right. appealing to emotionality. But pathos sounds more Greek somehow yeah. and like cooler. It, it is kind of cool. Yeah. So what did you go with on your video? Did we settle on I pathos? I have no idea. Or? It's pathos, probably. <laughs> You got a hard T in there. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a strict sweet in me. But yeah, I understand. It's, so do you use that pedal live? or? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the whole point of that pedal is to have it sound like a channel of an amp. Yes. Because I like doing um, like a clean amp with like a pedal situation. Yeah. And the, the pathos is like, um, I wanted to approach it as like, for me, it's a lead, a lead pedal. Meaning yeah. like, if I want to do a solo and have... Um, a certain type of fluidity, fluidity, and yes. a, yeah, and um, but man, it was funny because we run it into the face of the amp, like when I use it. But you did your video into the effects loop. Oh, no one told, tells me what to do. I just do what I, I do. know. But I was stoked because the sound you got, I was like, wow. So there's a weird like because of how I use it, I didn't necessarily set it the way you did. But yeah. then I heard some of the sounds you're gonna. I'm like, oh wow, that's really cool. It sounds great like that too. So yeah, um, it isn't very feature laden. No. You know, but I think gear that sounds good, kind of like you don't got to do a lot of stuff no, to no, get no. it. To no, sound but right. it was a good. I, I really enjoyed that cool. pedal. It was really thick and rich. Yeah, and it's it's hard to describe, but you can even if it, there was a massive amount of gain, you could hear everything. Which yeah, I was like, oh shit! Like this chord really like rings out in a good way. So. The, yeah, really good, really good distortion pedal. Right on, man. So um, yeah. Do you have anything going on with Animals as Leaders? Are you writing something new or did you just release or have I not done my homework? Yeah, dude. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we have not really been that active because we're like in the album cycle part where we are trying to write a new album. We did a lot of touring off of the previous one. Yeah. Uh, we have some ambitious plans for the next album and so I like to truly be inspired as opposed to be like, damn, it's been a year and a half since yeah, we put yeah, on yeah. an album. You know what yeah. I mean? Do you have a label? Well, we are label free. So the last album we put out was our final yes. obligation. Yes. Um, so that is also like a cool change in the reality of music business where it's like, label? Exactly. Yeah. Like, what's your situation? Uh, well, in the haunt that I'm with a label, yeah, because so they I get are. to see because they are. Yeah. So I see both both worlds. Yeah, and I see the good things and obviously also the bad things. But it's feared like your oh, thing. it's self and you know my soul album. It's like the good thing about it is that I I think I have the work ethics to just complete it, mm. but I don't have to set a release date until it's done. <laughs> so I just oh, it's ready when it's done, and it's, you know I can go out all out then. But uh, sometimes with labels, that's when you've seen that and you felt like, okay, this is like the perfect world where you don't, you know, no one rules over you. Mm. You go to a label, it becomes really hard. I mean, and you know, you hear from the label and you, the compromises and what needs to be done to release an album is shocking, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it feels like I'm against the label. Mm -hmm. You know, and even it's, if it's an album that I released, like The Haunted, for instance, we release albums. And like some decisions just don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And um, in that sense, I'm glad to hear that you don't have a label. <laughs> because, I mean, it just gives you a lot more control in what, how you want to, you know, promote your album or how you want to just portray your album. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But some, in some sense, having a label push you might also be a good thing. So there's good and bad things, obviously. Yeah, I think every la label is different. Yeah. But I would say that the role of the record label seems to be... They're struggling. ...getting am ambiguous. Yes. It's someone who has a reach like... It's like, okay, you have this reach of people who are like decidedly connected to what you do. Mm. You might have a reach that exceeds some of these record labels. It's, maybe it's kind of an inverted uh <laughs> maybe you know what i mean but you still have to understand that they might not be the type of people that will buy your album or you know it's like a, it, it, it's it's different like in in one sense i feel like the haunted is a great and you know a big band for instance and uh they have a reach people buy their albums and they have you know they have a name that's out there while feared is not necessarily as big mm -hmm. but i know they make a shit ton more money mm even selling a lot less you know yeah, so what is 
what is important in this case. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely like this. There's it's a fun. sweet spot in there, yeah. you know, and it's good that like artists are now enabled to reach their fans without like these gatekeepers like exactly magazines and labels who decide who, where your music can exist. Exactly. And, yeah, so I think it's a cool it's a cool change and empowering to artists. Right. You know? I just had a, a coffee with Misha. Ah. And they're on He's, the same yeah. kind of he was pretty early to realize uh, it's guys who can record their own bands. Yep. They're like, okay, well, I have an album, so what are you going to give me for? You know, it, yeah. it, it shifted the the dynamic. Uh, traditionally, labels were kind of like they were like loaning bands money because it costs so much to record. Yes. And now it's like, well, that has changed. So Misha and Periphery, they really like. I think they were at the forefront of like kind of inverting that relationship mm. you know i remember talking to him years ago when they were gonna who he was going to sign with and what it would look like and he was kind of tuned into this shift pretty yeah. early on so yeah yeah cool so you are actually working on an album just don't know when i mean i got some riffs some there's some riffs i Can't guess show one now no <laughs> some <Sorry>. sweeps <laughs> okay so you know a lot of swedish i've heard so we're gonna have a swedish word today with tosin uh, yay uh, I do have like a segment on my FAQs where I have like a Swedish word and just do the, you know, the, the, the absolute <laughs> most useful Swedish words that are available. Some word. Uh, like, uh, you know, fitta, oh, you know, like fika, you know. Fika, yeah. fitta, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the gore. So, so do, you have a, do you have a really good Swedish word today? Uh, okay, we were talking about the like, Swedish like archipelago and all of the thousands yes. of islands and yes. you're maybe taking a ferry from one island to the other right yeah I was like gonna go kayaking in Sweden and uh, before we got in the water this old lady comes out of the water and she goes oh friskanda and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I think that means like refreshing yeah, or something. It does, it does, yes. <laughs> yes. so now I know what refreshing means Nice. Uh, I know a few other words, but I don't know what your audience is like. So. Oh, go ahead. Mm. D- I, like a real, if you have a real naughty one, that's fine. Oh, uh, there's some useful ones like rumpa. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's ass. By yo, the way. Yog alska rumpa. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Cool. <laughs> yeah, he loves the ass. Yog alska din rumpa. Oh yeah, thank, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> a lot of useful words. Snop. Oh yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. Do ho snap yo. Yeah, you did too, right? Yeah, make yeah. a store. Oh, ooh, okay. <laughs> Very small here. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Do not subtitle this. <laughs> no, I, we should stop. Yeah, we should <laughs> probably stop. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm really happy. I really happy to see you here and just uh, having the guitars and out at Nam. And it seems like a lot of people. Th- that crazy shredder I saw today. Who the hell was that? S- Stefan Taran- Tarantano. Oh, amazing. That guy. Should be a solo artist. No, we've <laughs> talked about this. <laughs> I wanted to give him my car, but he was in their booth playing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Dude, hey, he, he deserves all the guitars. Yeah. Man. Yeah, I know. Wow. There's so much talent out there. Yeah. But, you know, the internet has shown me there's so much talent out there. Yes. Nam is kind of like the internet in real life. It is. So it's where internet meets. I mainly see you on internet, and then at Nam, it's like, oh, oh old England. Is. Oh, he's actually. Oh, he's taller than I remember. Kind of a, kind of a disappointment. No, no. Yeah. Your but vision. It's, it's like a big company party for all the internet, kind of. Yeah, but what's cool is like if you're in a touring band, then you also see all your oh, tour yes, of buddies. Course, of course. And you know, it's you're like an artist, and now you're doing like a company thing. So Nam is a pretty layered thing, you know. Yeah. Yes. Um, but uh. I've decided, and I don't know if you think this too, but I think Nam traditionally was like, you do a lot of like purchase orders and you have these meetings where you're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And now I think it's just like a social media, like critical mass sort of thing. It is. It's basically just people trying to make things viral all mm. at the same time. Mm. They, everyone, I mean, some, what are you, what some are you bra- trying to make viral? Some brands already get it, uh. but I still don't understand why everyone releases news at Nam. Yeah, because when I heard about Solar, it was before Nam. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, 
there's still like brands still use distributors and retail so they all collected at one and the same place they have news makes all the sense but in a business perspective it might not be the best idea to just release a piece of news during now because everyone else is doing the same thing everyone's just competing about the same space but do you feel like there's more ears or eyes because it's NAM? so then they're more maybe people are checking in when they you know because they're expecting some stuff but then again two weeks after when it's totally quiet out there you have way more room online it's a good strategy we should talk more yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'll teach you my ways no it's just kidding <laughs> teach me more swedish yeah that's gonna happen too <laughs> so there you go thank you so much for joining in yeah it's dude. been a pure it's pleasure fun. yeah good times and uh like your swedish words ah Taxamekia. You're welcome. Oh. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. This is Tosin Abasi. Abasi Guitars. Yeah. Concepts. Uh, shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we make pedals, too. That's right, you make pedals. And more stuff coming. Yes. Soon. Anyway, Tore Lunt. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. That was fun. Well, where'd you get so good at interviewing? What? Do you think I'm good? <laughs>